Welcome to the Salt Strong Podcast, disrupting fishing entertainment as you know it. Prepare to laugh. Prepare to get to know fishing legends in a whole new and unfiltered way. And on occasion, you might even learn a thing or two about fishing. Here's your host, Joe Simons, like diamonds. Hello, Salt Strong Nation, Joe Simons, like diamonds. We are back again. I'm out in a boat. Out in a boat, and I want to start off by saying this is not a paid-for podcast episode. I am spending my own hard-earned money on Freedom Boat Club with my own credit card, not Salt Strong credit card, and I'm doing this for one big reason. I almost did not sign up because of some, what I want to call, kind of misleading or, or just wrong information out on the web. And I've heard from quite a few people who saw my video that I did on Instagram and Facebook about Freedom Boat Club who said the same thing that, hey, I Googled Freedom Boat Club and saw how much it cost and I, I decided not to do it. So I want to do this, one, to give them a shout out, and two, to talk about some of the misconceptions, and three, just tell you why I think this is one of the best deals I've ever done when it comes to fishing, boating, and creating memories with my family. And I have a special guest today to make sure that I say everything correctly. Alex Anchor. Anchor is your real last name. Yes, sir. Freedom Boat Club. Yes, sir. Winter Haven, Florida. Yes, sir. So... I'm going to give a shout out to my boy, Tim. So Tim Hassett, one of my friends here in Winter Haven, he has been a member of Freedom for how long? Uh, almost a year. Okay, so he was probably one of, the, one of the originals or close to it? He is one of the originals. I think he signed up as probably the 12th member. Nice. So Tim's talking about how awesome it is. And I never really asked him like how much it all cost, uh, but I was just like, all right, yeah, that sounds cool. And I kind of wrote it off. And then I went to do some research online. So I'm looking to buy a boat. So if you guys don't know my story, we were in Tampa on the water. We've had a family boat in Placida, Florida, where our condo is for, gosh, 15 years. And it's been a couple different boats. And it's on a lift. And I think once you have that kind of setup, you kind of get a little spoiled to be able to just go down and, and click a button or two and have a lift go down and the boat is in the water. And all of a sudden now I'm looking at having to, you know, get a trailer and uh, and, and to kind of take a step back. So we, we had that great setup there. Luke was less than a, uh, basically a mile from me in Tampa where he had his Maverick. So I had an access to boat pretty much anywhere I needed it there uh, on, on the west coast of Florida. And so we had our third child, little Action Jackson. and. That caused a lot of stress in our family. For any of you that have three kids, you know any kind of amount of kids cause stress. But the third one especially caused a lot of stress on my wife and I. And we had no family. My wife's from Savannah, Georgia. My family is all in Winter Haven, Florida. And we had no one there in Tampa except for Uncle Luke, who has got his hands pretty full with Otis the Wonder Dog. So we're sitting there like, all right, what are we going to do? Like, we're killing ourselves just trying to get stuff done and, like, live a normal life with three young kids. Uh, what, a six-year-old, three-year-old, and a newborn. And we're like, we have to make a change. And so we ended up exploring, just like I did with this boat deal I'm going to tell you about, we ended up exploring a lot of options, moving, you know, a little bit close to my family. Man, if we're going to move away from the water, because we lived on the water on Harbor Island. If you guys saw that video of where my brother Luke caught the snook from the balcony, that was our office and my our house really our town home was just a couple streets over basically so we were right there on the water i could walk out the backyard and actually fish a little flat there it was awesome so we're like all right if we're going to move inland we are going to give up all this water we're going to all of a sudden be stuck without you know waterfront why don't we just talk about winter haven florida and my wife at first was like winter haven florida there's nothing to do there and i don't know anyone and the more we kept going back to winter haven to see my family and going back to places like grove roots and just seeing all the stuff that they've built there and legoland now for the kids we're like man this is a pretty great place to actually raise a family and, uh, and it's a pretty great place to live. And so long story short, we pulled the trigger in Winter Haven, Florida. We're happy, we're settled in now, it's been a year. And next step, of course, is taking advantage of the chain of lakes. Right, Alex? Yes, sir. Chain of lakes has a lot to offer. It's one of the gems of Winter Haven, it, Florida. It truly is. And a lot of people actually really don't know about it. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's uh, really 
stabilized to just Winter Haven. Yep. Uh, the outside surrounding areas really don't know about it. I live over in Lakeland. Uh, I grew up over here, coming over here, wakeboarding, fishing, and stuff like that. So, uh, and the only way I actually knew about it was we started out over on Eagle Lake, uh -huh. and then we found out that there was a, a bunch of lakes, and that's when we started coming over here. And I was probably 16 when I found out about it. So uh, after I got back from the military, I was like. This is where I want to be. This is the closest I can get back to the water, uh, being in the Navy without being out on the coast. I was yeah. like, this is a big, this is going to be a big body of water. So I'm going to be, I'm going to feel more comfortable out here. With tons of stuff to do. I mean, you got now tons. restaurants and oh, yeah. I grew up, I'm a little bit older than you. I grew up, you know, sitting there on those same old tires that have been there forever. Mm -hmm. uh, the tire sandbar, as we like to call it, to watch Cypress Garden skiers way back in the day. Oh, yeah. And now you've got Legoland. I mean, I don't know if it's every day, but it, or is it twice a day? It's yeah, so they do, the Legoland does uh, two uh, two ski shows a day. Uh, so it's 12.15 and 2.15. And they add another one on uh, the weekends. Got so it. Saturday and Sunday, they'll add one at four. Got it. If you guys hear any wind, by the way, we are actually out on the boat in the middle of uh, Little Lake Eloise right now. But I tell you all that to let you know that that was kind of our journey of moving away from the water and, and having access to our, our family boat. And by the way, if you're wondering, hey, why didn't you take the family boat? Well, that's actually my dad's boat, even though we call it the family boat. And the rule is that thing only gets on a trailer usually once a year, and that's to go to the Florida Keys. It's there at the condo so that we can all use it, including us or my brother Luke or whoever ends up using the condo, that it's right there underneath the condo. And boom, you do hit just two buttons, and all of a sudden that bad boy is in the water. So we're sitting here in Winter Haven and we're dying to get on the lake we've been on the lake with a few friends and thank you to some of my amazing friends who took us out on the water and you just we're getting that itch and, and a lot of you probably know what i'm talking about whether you're freshwater or saltwater you get that itch when you're near the water and your friends have boats and especially i i say any time of year but especially at summertime when everyone's out and the kids are out of school and it's like we're just itching really bad and so we start looking at, at boats and to put yourself on our shoes, we have a family of five. You can't get a small boat. I can't start with a John boat or even a bass boat. doesn't make any sense. So we're looking at bigger boats, at least 20 feet or more. And I personally like to go a little bit newer boats, not necessarily brand new, but something that's mostly new so that I, I know it's going to be in good work condition. I'm not going to spend tons of money just on maintenance all the time. And the next thing you know, like we're looking at pretty expensive boats and the cost of boats is crazy right now. I mean, it's right. I mean, yes, you know, you, you're buying boats for yes. the club. It's nuts. <laughs> and so we're like, holy smokes. Like, I'm thinking, all right, we're going to be able to get something nice for like, you know, 15, 20. And like, no way. Like, if you want a, a decent boat that I would be able to use for the lake and still be able to have it on the trailer to take other places, I mean, you're talking 35, 40K minimum to get a legit, like, you know, I would, I would say a bay boat. Yes, sir. Uh, if you want it, and if you want it brand new with all the electronics and everything, you, you're talking a whole 60. lot more. Oh, yeah. And that's for like, because we have a Key West. So, oh, yeah. The boat and Placida Arcano is a 23 Key West. Mm -hmm. That sucker was 60k now. Oh yeah, that's crazy. Yep. I mean, Both just for a, a pretty a pretty basic, you know, bay boat. Yeah. Uh, when you start talking about yellow fins and these other ones, it's just like, holy smoke. So anyhow, we're doing all the math. And then because we live across the street from Lake, so we're in a, a neighborhood that actually owns a wreck lot across the street on Lake Eloise. So we can actually see... Uh, Legoland used to be Cypress Gardens. We could see the fireworks and stuff. It's a great setup, but the HOA rules state that you can't keep a boat there overnight and you can't keep a boat on a trailer in your yard. You can keep it in your garage, but our garage is six, I think 16 or eight. No, it's 18. Yeah. And so any, anyways, it doesn't even matter. Even with a 20 foot boat, it's just, it's not going to fit. No, it's not at all. So we're like, doggone it. And now you're talking about storage and, and then I'm looking at insurance costs and just, you got to factor in some maintenance. So here, here's here's what I did. For those of you who are wondering, like, you know, I did like a little T-chart, right? And boat ownership on one side and Freedom Boat Club on the other. And so both are going to have a down payment. And and this, I want to address this right up front because this is what almost turned me off. And had my buddy Tim not said, hey, just come out and meet Alex, uh, you know, meet, meet the team at Freedom Boat Club in Winter Haven, uh, I never would have done it. Because the first thing I did is I Googled how much does it cost to join Freedom Boat Club? And there is a down payment, right? Just like there a boat a or, or a car or a house, anything. Exactly. Yeah. And it's a one-time fee. One-time fee. You don't ever have to pay it again uh, after you pay that fee. Uh, even if you do decide to cancel at one point in time, 
uh, basically what happens if you ever do want to come back and join again, you don't have to pay that fee. You just start right back up on your monthly payments. Okay. So I did not even know that, yes, but sir. here, here's what turned me off. And, and this is, this is good Intel for you, Alex, and any of the freedom book club owners to maybe get this fixed on Google or address it at least on your page. So I Google, how much does it cost to join? And the first thing that come up is 5,000 bucks. It's the first thing in all of Google. And I know some other people have told me that too. And I, I paid a fraction of that, right? I mean, it's, yes, you, you guys are 3000. Yes, right. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, and the, the, it's hard to, uh, we can't streamline it across all freedom boat clubs. Cause of course certain boat clubs have different kinds of boats or whatever, what, what kind of boats they're buying. So they're going to have a heftier price tag, stuff like that. So, uh, basically it, it would be really hard for us to do it on Google to pay to say, okay, cool. This right here, uh, freedom boat club for all locations is $5,000. Um, the reason, and that would be the reason why we can't do that. Um, that's why it's, it's really important to call uh, uh, the local club that you're at for the more information. Uh, come out and check it out. As soon as you come check it out, we'll, we'll work with you on pricing, stuff like that. So um, if you really want to experience the Freedom Boat Club experience, just come on out. We'll, we'll take care of you, uh, take you on a tour, see what it's all about. And, and you guys... Uh, not to talk about uh, mm -hmm. too many details, but you guys can work out deals if someone wanted to do like a two pay. Like if you didn't want to pay the 3000 up front, you could pay over two months or something like that. I yes, know sir. just because you guys want more members, right? I mean, of all, all, yeah. of, all of you groups do, but I think r that was a big one. It was kind of misleading because I, I saw one where or one place it said 5,000, like 500 a month. And I was like, oh man, like, because you have to put a down payment on a boat, right? And I was like, man, the boat's probably going to cost me in that four to 500 a month range when mm -hmm. you talk about the monthly payments, some kind of storage, and, and insurance. Mm -hmm. So it's like, ah, it's kind of even. And then I realized it was a fraction of that price. So he, at least here in Winter Haven, we can't speak for all groups because no, they're all slightly different. And there's even yes, different sir. packages, right? Where you can get some where you unlimited, some only for weekdays or weekends. Yes, sir. Yeah. So there's there's multiple different packages. Uh, you can do a six month just see if you like it. We even have three in one month. Hmm. So come in, you, you pay for one month. It's actually cheaper than going to rent a boat from somewhere uh, for a one time use. Uh, you're going to come out here and pay. Um, our price and you're gonna have a boat for a whole month and then after that then if you don't if you decide to uh, re-up that month another month well we'll go ahead and see if you want to do a longer term and we'll apply that that uh, first payment to your down payment to where we can get you in here to using the boats uh, whenever you want I mean that's our goal and our goal is to get more members but by getting more members that means we get more boats and when we get more boats we get a bigger variety of boats so uh, that's what that's what we really want to be able to serve our customers better than uh, uh, expected. Yep. So we really want to get new members so that we can buy boats. When we get those boats, when we get those large assortment of boats, it'll be better for everybody. Yeah. And so that, that that's funny you say that because I told my wife about it and I told I was like, hey, I want I and I'm, I'm really I'm not getting paid to do this. Like I truly believe in this. I mean, Alex and he's nodding. I, I'm yes, using sir. my own personal credit card because I believe in this and it's helping me create memories for my family. But I tell my wife, I was like, hey, I want to help them out. Like I want to like say how awesome this stuff is she's like well don't tell too many people like all of a sudden we won't be able to get boats anymore i was like no 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 like like and that's I, that's a natural thought right but the irony is you guys have your own rules or bylaws where every 10 members you have to go buy a new boat correct so like i was like i want new members and 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 i, I maybe i'm wrong maybe at some point you get so big and bloated that it's it's tough but i mean if you get a new boat for every 10 members i haven't had an issue yet booking like and I know you guys don't like it when I do this, but even like a day in advance or even the same day, yeah. I can send you a text and say, hey, do you guys have anything open? And every single time, there's been at least one, if not two boats open. Yeah, that's, and, a, that's the cool thing about us being a smaller club as of now. With us being so small, uh, I mean, it's really easy to get a boat. Yeah, no, so. it's super easy. Uh, yeah, even, what was it? I guess it was on a weekend. I mean, I sent you a text like that morning. He's like, dude, you got he anything did. open? He's like, yeah, uh, come on. I was like, all right, I'll be there in an hour. <laughs> um, so I think it's so cool. And so I told my wife that and she's like, oh, cool. I get it. So I was like, listen, if we just get three more members here in this club, they're going to either get a new bass boat with a troll motor mm -hmm. or a really nice, like, you know, Mastercraft type ski boat. Yeah. And I was like, that's huge. And and so, like, I, I think that was another mis misconception is like, oh, yeah, you don't really want new members. Like, no, like, the more members you have, the bigger it gets, the more powerful it gets, the more boats that you have. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a win-win for, uh, for everyone. But let's go back to my little T-chart. 
Uh, we're here drifting here, Alex. You keeping an eye on the boat? I don't want to yes, sir. Ding up your your brand new uh, <laughs> your brand new uh, bay boat or a uh, deck boat here. So you got down payment, you got monthly payments, you got insurance, you got registration, which is not that much. I got maintenance, which could be a lot depending on your boat and and how old it is. You got the trailer, and I mean, I'm just thinking about the Keys because that's the one place that we do trailer our boat every year. And dude, if you've ever been to the Keys before, it is. I mean, it's a nightmare. One, to even find a good place to launch a boat. Yeah. That there's not going to be, because usually when we go to the Keys, it's the first week of lobster season. Yeah. Or mini oh, yeah. season. And and then you have to pay usually hundreds of dollars for the week mm-hmm. just to store your trailer somewhere because everyone knows it's supply and demand and they charge you out the yin yang for that. Yep. Uh, and it's all that stuff. And right now, I mean, our trailer's at my dad's old office that I believe he's having to pay money just to let it sit there with probably flat tires right now and so i'm i'm thinking about that i was like all right now i have to trailer and i got to store it either a friend's house or someone's house or, or my dad's old uh old old lot there where he has in barto and then now it's in barto so i got to drive 40 minutes to go get it yep and then you got the storage issue if you live on the yep. lake great but then again you got to have a dock with a lift and lifts are it's not cheap no they're not <laughs> and the maintenance on that is even more yep and then and then the final piece was one boat now for a lot of you i know there's pride in boat ownership and we've had a lot of boats in my family over the years my dad uh kind of was going through boats like women go through shoes um and there's pride in having that boat but there's also the bad part of only having that one boat and i mean it in a couple instances right so yes. one boat meaning you have one let's just say a bay boat is not going to be the best for going bass fishing or going nope. really skinny it might not mm-hmm. be the best for pulling kids on an inner tube no uh it's nice to have different boats for different things a pontoon boat not the coolest thing in the world for some people but doggone pontoon boats are awesome for yeah. out in the lake or for the lot of people like for 10 people yeah. especially you, if you have small children it's a stable platform to walk around on uh, yeah and it's got guardrails all around it it's it pontoon boats are amazing for that mm-hmm. but not everyone wants to buy a pontoon boat like to go fishing for inshore yeah. fishing and so i say all that you only have one boat and and then two and because you only have one boat if something breaks down which inevitably it will and we've done that when we're on trips sometimes or something breaks down you are out of luck Yes, and you are. that kind of stinks, especially if you've got, you know, it's vacation time, you get kids out of school or whatever it is. And we've even had instances where we're going to be crossing, like we used to go to the Bahamas and you got boat issues and it kills the whole trip. Mm-hmm. And, but on the flip side, you do have the boat and the, the pro of owning your own boat is you got the pride and it's your baby and you can fix it up however the heck you want to. You can put your own decals on it. Yes, you can. And you can take it wherever you want to and plop it in the water. Yes, you can. That's the awesome part. That is the awesome so part. So that was, that was what I had down for boat ownership. Now on Freedom Boat Club, still got a down payment. In this case, three thousand bucks. Three thousand for, for Winter Haven. That's a one-time, you know, fee. You don't pay that again. You got monthly payments, three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars, and that covers you everything. So now I have no insurance. Mm-hmm. I got no registration. No registration. Got no storage. No storage. No stinking trailer to deal with. Nope. No maintenance. Not at all. And the thing for me that reminds me of what. I mentioned we kind of got spoiled by always having a lift, and we grew up in uh, in, in Winter Haven here. And uh, and when we were twelve, my dad finally bought his little dream lake house. It wasn't a big house, but it was a lake house. Lake house. And we house. had a little dock, and we had an old bass boat, uh, an old used bass boat he bought for us for Luke and I, and it was on a lift. Same deal. So I kind of got spoiled on that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, have especially with three young kids and having to think about. You know, just the trailer issues and having to wait in line. It it because a lot of times you are going on weekends and especially oh, yeah. holiday weekends. Holiday weekends like, are just gonna be absolutely. Oh, packed. it's nuts! Mm-hmm. And so now I don't have any of that stuff. And for those, you, the, I'm gonna do a whole video on this uh, for YouTube because I, I just did a quick little thing on my phone. But the coolest part is, at least here in Winter Winter Haven, I haven't seen all the other other clubs. But you pull up, I'm talking about within feet of the boat you're about to get on. It's in the water. In many cases, it's already turned on for you. Everything's been inspected. And you have to walk all of like six feet, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah, eight. About, maybe. If you get something from the trunk, it's about eight feet. So put everything <laughs> in the boat and you leave your vehicle there. It can't be any easier. No. Especially like on holiday weekends. Oh, yeah. Uh, where everyone else is waiting. I mean, here we have, you know, there's a few really nice ramps, but with a lot of parking, they get packed on, especially holiday weekends. Yes, they do. It's nuts. Yeah. 
There's, yeah, there's a lot of people that like to come out here on the holidays. There's, like, like I said, the Channel Lakes. There's a lot to do out here. So, yes. uh, on a on a good holiday weekend like Fourth uh, of July or something like that, these these uh, boat ramps are going to be absolutely slammed. Yep, and the boats are always gassed up. Yes, they are. That was another big thing. So you're going to pay for gas regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I didn't really put a plus and minus. You're still going to have to pay for gas. But you show up, and the boats are always gas. So that means no more waiting in line, especially I'm, – I'm just envisioning the Keys trip we take every year where, y- you know, you get down there, and it's just a nightmare to even try to pull your boat up, mm-hmm. uh, you know, to a gas station oh, in yeah. some of those places near the Keys. And, uh, oh, my gosh, it gives me anxiety even thinking about it. <laughs> uh, so it's always gassed up. You have tons of boats versus just one, and you have different boats for different things. Like this weekend, it's my little boy's birthday, little Action Jackson. is uh, now turning three, if you guys can believe it. So his third uh, birthday is this Saturday, and we're taking the pontoon out. And mm-hmm. I think we're even going to get Dan the man, a lot of my little bro in the wheelchair. So it's wheelchair friendly, I, I will say. Like yes. it, you guys have made it super easy. The at least the pontoon boats. I mean, they they nose right up to the dock, mm-hmm. and we already have those little steel ramps. Yep. Boom. Uh, and we already did the measurements so his wheelchair will fit in there, no problem. And. Yeah. Uh, we'll be able to take Dan the man out, out in the lake and pull the kids tubing. I think that was another misconception is, oh, and, and I'm, I'm speaking for your club, and I'll let Same. you talk about that. But you guys even allow uh, you know, us to, to do water skiing and stuff and take the kids tubing. I do. This, I mean, uh, I mean, Winter Haven has been revolved around water skiing for a long time. You had Cypress, in, uh, Cypress Gardens, water yeah. skis, and then you have the Legoland that do it now. And then you still have the, uh, there's quite a few ski schools that are still out here. So uh, we really want people to be able to enjoy the water of what it's really intended for. I mean, people have been skiing out here for a long, long time. So yeah, of course we want people to, to go out and, and ski and tube and wakeboard and learn how to do it and stuff like that. I mean, that's, that, that's part of having a boat and wanting to uh, do some different types of sports that you never thought you possibly do. Yep. So that is the, that is the great thing about, uh, winter Haven is, is, uh, the towing and skiing stuff. Um, there's a slight different training that we have to do. It's about an hour. Uh, and then you also get to pull me behind the boat, make sure that you're using all the proper safety rules of, by uh, law, by the state of Florida. Yeah. And I'll let you go. Sweet. So it'll be a good time. That's awesome. Yeah. And I do love how you guys focus on safety. They make, regardless of your skill level and how many boats you've driven, they make you go through a little course, you know, take, uh, take the boat out and, uh, and just super helpful. They're, um, always there to help. Alex is always, at the, usually always at the dock if you're not someone else is. Yes, sir. To even help you unload stuff if you got a heavy cooler and too oh, many yeah. kids in your other arm. <laughs> uh, I mean, just super, super helpful. So I love that part. And when I bring it back, they just monitor, you know, the the tank to see how much ga- uh, gas I've used and yes, fill it up for me. I don't have to do anything. No, so so simple. Um, and then we'll talk about the. I say I wrote down mini boats, which is true. You guys have five now. We have five. Okay. Yep. And three more people. There'll be hopefully a new a new bass boat. Um, what I've loved so far is all the boats here, and this is a, a new club, a yes, new work club. They're brand spanking new. I mean, this hurricane we're in right now, so this is a, a, a deck boat. Yeah. And then you got the pontoon boats. Yep. And uh, this is, is it, this, this is, how, this how many is, hours on this? This has, I think, 91 when I did the reading this morning. It has okay. 91 hours on it. Uh, it's a, it's, it's a 2019. So we, we bought it back in May is when we bought this boat. Got it. So, uh, and we bought it straight off the line, ready to go. So remember earlier, I talked about the the reason you want more members. Mm-hmm. So one, every 10 members, their rules are, their promise to us as, as their members is they have to get a new boat. Mm-hmm. And one of the other big rules is once a boat hits three years old, like my little son, Action Jackson, they have to replace it. We will not be replacing Action Jackson, but every time that a boat hits three years old, or is it or so many hours? Yeah, if it, if it starts getting up there in hours, if they start getting used a lot, uh, I will go ahead and replace the boats just because, I mean, that's when your major amount of breakdowns are going to happen. Once you start getting up then into that higher hour range, um, and we, we take really good care of the motors. We do uh, 100-hour services on the dot every Every time uh, but I mean stuff still can happen and yep. once they start getting older and they start pushing um, 
about a thousand up to thousand fifteen hundred hours. I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna start trading them out because I don't want anybody being out here getting stuck. I want people to come out here and have a good time. Yep. And even if you do, and I thought this was a cool thing, it has not happened to me, uh, and I hope it never does. But even if something does break down, let's just say you got a boat that's getting a little bit older. When I say older, like two years old, because it can't get past three, and something does happen your day ain't ruined. So Alex will actually come out, regardless of where you are on the chain, he will come out in another boat, find you, and take care of the other one and let you guys have the boat that's working. Like, he will make sure your day is still going to be awesome. That is impossible to happen if you're in your own boat. It's like CETO on steroids. It is. So yeah. You guys should use that in your marketing. Yeah. I won't yeah. even charge you for it. <laughs> CETO on steroids. Yeah. That's a good idea. And, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, if if that boat ever does break down, it's it's a, uh, all right, cool, give me a call. I'm in a boat coming to get you. I'll transfer you over to the boat that's working, and you guys go have a good day. I'll deal with the broken boat. Including the bill, meaning yeah. you guys. Yeah, yeah. The, I'm, I'm not on the on the line for when no, things break down. Not. It's like, like renting versus owning. Pros and cons, but doggone, when stuff starts breaking, it's it, nice when you're renting. Yeah, it is. And boats are expensive. Yes. <laughs> And now, and here's the final piece, and I'm going to talk about the cons, too. Uh, here at Saltstrong, we do not take sponsors, and we always like to talk about the pros and the cons, what we call fair and balanced. But the last thing that got me over the edge, and this is another thing that I think can, it confused me, and I know a few people have mentioned it confused them, was the four free, I think you guys call them reciprocal? Reciprocal, yeah. Pa passes or? Yeah, so you have, uh, so they're, uh, the other locations, um uh, you have how many now total? Uh, 190 different locations. Different locations of okay. Freedom Boat Club. That is that is the U.S., Canada, and I think France. Uh, that I think there's five in France now. Hmm. Uh, but there is there's a lot. There's almost 70 just in Florida alone. Uh, but you're, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Uh, you were talking about people were uh, confused about the four reciprocal locations that they get. So you have four times a year at each location so it's four times a hundred and whatever 190 okay so if you were to travel the country and you wanted to go do every single freedom boat club in a year you have four times at each location so we'll call it 800 i'm yeah I, we promise there's never any math on this podcast but four <laughs> times 200 i know is 800 so it's yeah. somewhere below that oh, so yeah. 800 on top of unlimited at your own club Correct. so that's another misconception people think oh i i can because that's the we'll talk about that next that's the reservations that confused me mm -hmm. uh but this was huge when i because i was like oh it's only four total like i could only i could go to the one in jacksonville once and the one in daytona once so like it's four at every single club that's i mean it would be impossible for you to use them all it right because be you'd have to go twice what at least twice a day yeah yeah you <laughs> across, really would. across the world mm -hmm. um one of the guys i'll give him a shout out uh keith marsh you know keith in, know. in tampa i do not so keith is in charge of i think uh marketing and communications okay. for freedom boat club for all of tampa gotcha and he he found out that i joined he's like dude you got to come over here and use some of our boats in tampa he's yeah. like just in tampa alone I get 112 trips. Yeah. 112 just yeah. in Tampa Bay alone. Uh -huh. Like, if I use that many, my wife is going to leave me. Like, that means I'm <laughs> out the boat way too much. Yep. Yeah. So that's crazy. It's like, that's awesome. Uh, so that was another misconception because it wasn't spelled out. And once again, if you're listening, any of you Freedom Boat Club members or owners, I would spell that out really clearly uh, on the site because uh, it confused okay. me and it confused yep. other people too about the payment. Just, hey, be up front. Here's what it is at this place. Mm -hmm. And we get that too with Salt Strong. A lot of people are like, well, hey, why do I got to apply to join the Insider Club and how much is it? Why don't you just tell me what it is? And we were stubborn on that um, yeah. just because we have different levels and we didn't want to. Now we just tell it what it is yeah and if you're listening it's i mean we have 11 bucks a month so you can get mm -hmm. in for 11 dollars a month to get like the pro access to get all the, everything that you need obviously there's there are other levels but that's yeah. like so basic mm -hmm. 11 that's that's like 30 cents a day yeah i always tell people it's a, a whole lot less than your wife's double mocha frappuccino yeah. chai tea <laughs> infused starbucks latte uh so anyhow i i think that's to me, that's good advice for any of the Freedom Boat owners is just to make it really clear on your individual pages okay. about the upfront cost, the the monthly cost, mm -hmm. and then you're never going to pay a penny more, yep. minus you know gas, obviously, that you're going to have to pay regardless. 
and then the four free passes to every single book. Like I would spell it up like 800 yeah. uh, different passes that you can use. Yeah, uh, that's a lot. crazy. Um, so let's talk about the reservation because that, that kind of confused me too, okay. where you can only have like, so you can use an unlimited, right? Yes. Like in here in Winter Haven, I could go every single day, seven you days could. a week. Mm -hmm. But you can only book, is it four reservations it's, in advance? Like it's Yes, it's four reservations in advance. And the reason why we do that is so that people aren't booking an entire week with a boat and then not using it for half that week. Or like a whole month. Like exactly. I, I could just book it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, so basically what it is, is it's four rolling reservations. So if you were to take every Saturday in a month, when you come in that first Saturday and you uh, go out on the boat, we do the check-in. Uh, when you come back in, we'll do the check-in, make sure uh, that everything's still good to go. Then that reservation will come off the books. And then you will go ahead and lose one reservation. So you have three on the books and one that you can still use. So now you can go ahead and book that last Saturday of the month or the, the first Saturday of the new month. Yep. And you're still going. So as soon as you come in for one reservation and you, you're done with your day, that reservation falls off the books and you're able to use that reservation again. So that's how that works. Uh, do I, it, it, was that clear? Um, that that's clear i think the okay. next question is so let's just say i had uh the next four saturdays on the counter so i've okay. used my four right my yep. four reservations and now it's thursday and you have a, an open boat i can still use it like i could still go every day yeah you still could go every day um i mean if you really want to if you really want to get out uh out on the water and i'm completely open just give me a call you give me a call i'm i'm more willing to help uh Get you out on the boat. Get you out on the water. Because you, uh, you guys want people using the boat. Yeah, like of that, course. The whole point is they know, yeah. just like a gym membership, if people aren't using it, they're probably not going to keep renewing and loving and telling their friends like I am. I, exactly. I'm out here at least twice a week, yeah. and I love it because, like, man, why why wouldn't I? Yeah. Because uh, yeah, I think that was a misconception is people think, oh, they, you know, it's, they don't want us using the boats. That's why you can only do it four times a month, and that's not true. I mean, you could no. literally go every single day. Every day. Uh, and and we're speaking for this club here, particularly mm -hmm. where I'm a member of. Um, but depending on, and, and I have to imagine most clubs are similar, especially during the week. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, I live a couple miles from the one here. It's at the old, um, uh, what's it called? The Rainbow, Rainbow Boat. Bo yeah, the old yeah. Rainbow Boat Base. And so I'm like, I don't know, maybe two miles away. Yeah, not far. Uh, a whole lot quicker if uh, if there weren't back, you know, back, all these little tw Tw yeah. twist and turns I had to take but as the crow flies it's crazy close yeah. so I've come on lunch breaks I've come to some of mm -hmm. you guys have seen some of the videos we film some of them are out here just right on the boat in the middle of Lake Eloise oh yeah you guys think it's salt water it's fresh water behind me <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyhow I, I think that part uh, was a little bit little confusing and and maybe has turned some people off because some people yeah. reached out to me and said, well, hey, like I heard you can only go like you know four times a month. It's like no, like mm -hmm. you can go unlimited. You can. And and there, I know we have a couple of our insiders who who own boats. Okay. And sold them mm -hmm. to get the cash and just were kind of burnt out on all the maintenance and all the all the just the hassle that comes with it. Yeah. And then joined. And they're, they have different memberships. I know one guy, I think it was in Jacksonville, mm -hmm. and he's got unlimited Monday through Friday, but not the weekends. Correct. And it was like crazy cheap. Yep. It's it's a lot cheaper if you do a, if If you want the full package, if you want everything, you want weekends, you want holidays, you want uh, uh, just all of it, uh, that is where we start out out at our price and then everything falls from there so, so if you i'm do, at 300 I, i'm unlimited i get the correct i'm yeah, gonna you, call it vip package even though you guys don't call it that yeah but. yeah good yeah standard package vip package that works and then i mean <laughs> you have multiple different packages so like i was saying earlier you're one month three month six month or your monday through friday uh so we have seasonal that would be the seasonal memberships and then your monday through friday so um yeah there's multiple different packages definitely on certain people's price ranges it, it really does depend yeah. so it's a, a completely up to the person but yeah we yeah. do have, we do offer different packages in, in his case he was retired and he was he he didn't like to fish the weekends anyways because mm -hmm. it got so crazy like i'm only fishing the weekdays so he got like it was some crazy low price to go unlimited and he was going every single day yeah. monday through friday in the mornings and going fishing and i think another misconception is you know that all the boats are just a bunch of pontoon boats and deck boats now here at least right now this is a new club they are mm -hmm. uh i've been pushing a lot of a lot of it comes down to your members too like you guys listen you guys like hey if we can get a, a new boat what would it be i was like dude let's get a bass boat right here yeah. in the chain this is like 
an amazing uh, bass, bass fishing. Mm. Uh, I mean, right here in this lake alone, I mean, there's so many lakes here that have amazing, uh, amazing bass fisheries. And I was like, let's get one with a troll motor. And I've heard some other members in Tampa, St. Pete, some other areas yeah. that have said that, yeah, like a lot of these boats have troll motors, not yeah. all of them, mm -hmm. but they're, they're now bringing in some nice, like, you know, skiffs and flats boats yeah. and bay boats with troll motors. So it's not just about going out and taking the kids around on the tube or doing a mm -hmm. booze cruise. It's great to do that. It is. But uh, they have kind of a boat for everyone uh, from what I've seen so far. And I'm excited to go to some of these other ones. Now, another really cool thing about this, and my boy Tim, man, Tim, you're getting all kinds of shout outs today. Um, so Tim has been using Freedom Boat Club and Home Assassa. So he's, he books it way in advance. So if you guys know Home Assassa scalloping time, like it gets crazy there. It's going, it's like going to the Keys in mini season. It's nuts. Boat ramps are crazy packed. Mm -hmm. Everything is just nuts there. I mean, you could wait an hour in line to, to launch or to, uh, to relaunch your, uh, to, uh, to put your boat back on the, on the trailer. Yep. And so Tim uses his one of his, you know, 800 free passes for the year, and he gets a boat there completely for free. All he has to do is show up on time and get it yep. at home assess. So he rents the house, takes the whole family out, and they go scalping on, I, I believe it's a pontoon boat. Or yeah, some I kinda, think, yeah, yeah, I think they took a pontoon boat. Yep. That's a steal. Yes, it is. Because otherwise, and to rent a boat, like, just for a day in places like that, it's, what, 400 Even here About, in the chain, it's, yeah, it's 400, 400 bucks a, yeah, day a day to get that. And mm -hmm. you can do this every single day. So I thought that was cool that you can go other places. I know Tim has been doing it in Daytona. He sent me a picture of him using one of the boats there in Daytona. So he's taking full advantage of it. Oh, yeah. And, and we like to see that. We like people that we like to uh, see our, our members going to other clubs and experiencing uh, saltwater because yep. we're all freshwater here. So them being able to experience that saltwater is, is great. Yep. So let's talk about the downsides. Okay. He's always getting antsy. Alex like, oh, boy. <laughs> so he, here's what I found so far, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the one of the downsides is you can't run it at night like um, correct and that's because your insurance it insurance makes sense because that's when it. most of the accidents at least the really bad accidents yeah. happen people run into docks or jetties or other boats oh, yeah. at night without the running lights on and stuff like that yeah. yeah and there's there's a there's a lot of rules when it comes to boating at night so you have to know all your sound signals all your light signals and all this other stuff so there's a lot of uh stuff that goes into driving a boat at night yep and at first I was like, yeah, that kind of stinks. But then I thought about it. I was like, man, how many times have I been out fishing at night? And it was actually a handful in the past mm -hmm. year. But every time it's either been with another friend yep. or on, you know, on our family boat mm -hmm. or, um, or it's like just a quick little thing to fish some docks. I was like, yep. man, if that's the case, I just need to do my dad's best advice was, hey, stop buying boats and, uh, and find good friends or brothers or dads who, who have yep. boats. And I've taken them pretty pretty uh seriously on that um and so if 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 that's a turnoff if you're using a boat that much at night then yeah freedom boat club might not be the best fit for you and if you're already doing it that much then you know it's yeah. probably not a fit but that is one downside mm -hmm. so you guys is it 7 a.m that you guys open so here? we i open at uh so i i open from sunrise to sunset okay so i will be open from sunrise to sunset um and you guys have some exceptions if someone keeps it you're just not allowed to run it like if you dock Correct. it somewhere yeah so we have a lot we actually have quite a few members that live out on the chain themselves huh. so uh one of our members the hassets they live in the canal right next to us so where we're sitting right now uh and they have they have kept the boat overnight um the, the only thing that I really ask is not to run the boat at night yeah um I mean if you want to go out and you're watching the sunset and you're coming right back in right off lake eloise right out of the canal from the sunset cool you're still technically within uh parameters to run the boat yep. uh, as long as that sun is not all the way down you're completely fine uh but yeah we do allow people to keep it keep it overnight so if they do have those two reservations back to back and uh they want to say go fishing really early in the morning they want to be on that boat already prepped ready to go uh and as soon as it hits the sun comes up they want to be on that boat going to their favorite place to go fishing that's completely okay with us we yep. don't we don't mind uh, um, the boat's not that far really it's not so uh we don't mind that at all just be careful not to yes to break the rules and take pictures and post on instagram and 
then you lose your you lose everything. Yeah, you lose just, everything. Just play by the rules. Yeah. All right, so that's one down downside. The other one, at least for me as a fisherman, is that a big chunk of the boats do not have trolling motors, which can right. make it you know make it tough to fish. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, you can still drift with it. You can still like our old boar waiter Dave's got a really nice boat that I've mm-hmm. seen, and I what's so funny is he takes his boat two other beaches and sandbars and oyster bars or flats and then he gets out and wades that area so you can still obviously do that yeah it's a, a great way to still go out there and throw the anchor down most all these boats come with anchors right yes. and obviously you can bring your own stick at pins that stuff if you needed it but i think that is one downside and i don't mm-hmm. want to speak for all the clubs but uh, i know a lot of them do have troll motors and, and more kind of fishing boats yeah. but that's been one you know downside i would see but once again more members more boats and they've uh so far listened to all the members from what i can tell in terms of hey what do you guys want we just mm-hmm. hit we just hit our 10th member we got to get a new boat what do you guys want and then yes, speak sir. up um talk about holiday weekends okay. i think that could be another downside because let's face it if you're a member you're probably wanting to use it somewhere mm-hmm. in the country or in france and we we <laughs> um how how tough is it on on a like how far in advance do you have to book for a, a a busy like a Labor Day memorial? Okay, so I can only really speak for our club, um, but with us being so small, it is much easier to get a boat on the weekend. But I mean, you do have those people that really want to be out here out on on Labor Day or Memorial Day, those big boating holidays. Uh, I mean, and they're they're booking three four months in advance. Um, my last last let's say we'll, we'll just take go ahead and because uh, labor day was kind of ruined by that that hurricane that was supposed to come oh, yeah. here so we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll just say memorial day so memorial day i was uh i had five boats i had four out uh and those four boats were out all day uh and most of those people booked within i would say a month okay so they were about a month out when they started booking so that's that would be one downside is you can that would be one you like today we're out I, I i could do it you know within 24 hours uh, mm-hmm. but it's going to be a tougher on a on a on a on a busy weekend yeah but uh, we do have but we do have uh, a few things that will mitigate that just in case we do have a boat come available uh, there is a wait list so if you do want a boat and you're like okay i really want this boat let me put a put a reservation on the wait list. As soon as it's wait listed and you have that boat, it's like, okay, cool. As soon as someone cancels and says, look, I can't make it today, something happened, or someone comes in early, that boat's going to go right back out if there's a wait list. If there's no wait list, I have no clue if you want a boat. So use that wait list. Use it so I can get you out on the boat whenever you want to. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's there to help with that kind of issue. And, and for those of you who are not members, when you say waitlist, there's a website. Is there an app too? I only use yes. the website. So yeah, the, I I think the website's a little bit easier to use. It yeah. runs a little better. Um, but yeah, so it's 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 on the same thing. So when you do make your reservation, you'll go down, you'll click the button that says reserve this boat, and then you pick your times. Uh, when there isn't, when they're blocked out red that's when it goes to a wait list so you go ahead and you click on it you do your same times you do the same thing and it'll say thank you for adding to the wait list so you'll be added to the wait list if that boat comes available now i go right into this into this uh this wait list and i look at it and still right on the reservation system i go right into it be like okay cool joe wants this boat let's get him out here so i'll give you a call get you a call get you out here get you out on the boat cool and I know um, I took it out. We had some friends in Atlanta. Their kids had never been on a boat before. Yeah. And we took them out, did some pontooning, like went up to uh, Harborside and had lunch, like had an awesome day. And we needed to be back in one because I told them we were going to have a half day because you guys have it broken up into, into two, yeah. two halves, essentially. Correct. And then he sent me a text to people behind us. One of their kids got sick or something. And he, mm-hmm. Alex sends me a text like, hey, you guys can use it the whole day if you want to. Like, sweet. Uh, and, and, and extended the day for us, which was really awesome. And of course, you can book it out the whole day if you wanted to. I just, yes. I didn't think, I knew we didn't need it because we had young kids too for naps. Mm-hmm. But I was like, oh, all right, now we don't have to rush to back to get in, yep. take our time, and uh, that was that was really awesome. Um, wh- what other, in your opinion, uh, any other like downsides that, that you? Because those are the big ones, uh, and obviously just the the pride part of owning your own boat and be yeah. able to throw it in anywhere you want to. Yeah. Uh, but then again. 
doggone the the ease of use and i mean why you guys call it freedom mm -hmm. to be able just to pull your car truck suv whatever you drive within yeah. feet yeah. of the boat it's on it's been checked you know mm -hmm. it's in good work condition you know it's new and to be able to go out is pretty stinking awesome yes it is uh i mean you've hit pretty pretty some the big the big cons of freedom boat club it's got to be something else what else do people say like why they wouldn't join like an objection that uh so i've had uh if anybody knows the chain of lakes they know that going through these chains uh we're going to each lake through the canals there's bridges and i've had quite a few members forget about the bimini being up. oh boy so when it when something breaks on the boat uh it's it's going to take me a little time to um get that boat back up to its 100 percent uh, efficiency yep. so there there has been a time where it was dead of summer and someone had nailed my bimini and i had to s send somebody out on a boat without a bimini so that was that was a complaint uh the way that i have mitigated uh, to, to mitigate that is uh we have bought a second boat that we use as a ghost boat hmm. so if a boat goes down we go ahead and we take the boat that went down out of the fleet and we take that brand new boat and stick it in the fleet so that we can uh we can get still have people use the boat to their full potentials got it nice one other thing too because we're on the boat here and i'm looking uh i mean these things come with like nice stereo systems uh with you know the bluetooth and all that and even fish finders i'm looking at here they're not they're not like five thousand dollar fish finders but doggone they work and yes, they're it. new mm -hmm. uh and they're all built into all the boats i mean this these are this is nice yeah. uh I don't, I don't i can't speak for all the other clubs but uh man pretty nice to have your fish finder and stuff right there mm -hmm. uh for you and especially if you're you know out, out in salt water to be able to yeah. see where any potential sandbars oyster bars channel markers etc oh, yeah. might uh, might want to jump out at you which has happened time to time yes they do um I'm trying to think of any uh, any other ones that people have asked me about. This seemed to be the main ones. I think, and, and kind of why I ultimately joined when I found out that it wasn't as much as I thought it was, that I'm actually like saving money, that I now have access to all these boats. And ultimately for me with three young kids, I'm now boating more than I ever would have. I think a lot of people, and especially if you've already bought a boat, you're probably nodding. You like, you get so excited and use it a lot the first couple weekends, and then all of a sudden it's on the trailer and something breaks, or you have a flat tire, or it's just it's a pain in the butt to just to get all the kids in in the car truck and then go yeah. launch it. With this, it's so easy. I mean, yeah. I can do it on my lunch break. I can I can do it on a, just a quick Saturday morning mm -hmm. and take the kids out from eight to noon yeah. um, without having any hassle, without having to worry about going to get the trailer or any of the other stuff that comes along with, with launching a boat. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that part was big, meaning I'm I am gonna use it a whole lot more because of how simple it is. Yeah, right. we want to we want to we want to maximize that that potential to relax. Like I actually got a guy coming out today. He's gonna he's gonna come out here. He's gonna sit out in the middle of Lake Eloise and he's gonna sit there and work. <laughs> he so works he, on the boat. He's gonna work on the boat. So he just hot spots it. Yeah, he hot hot spots it. Sets up his laptop. That's pretty. Starts funny. working. So yeah, that's pretty funny. Oh yeah, he does that a lot. Uh, about once a week. <laughs> about once a week. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious mm -hmm. all right that, uh, that gives me an idea now when i have to start uh using this for uh for my office <laughs> especially in the for those of you guys who listen to the podcast while well, you've, you've heard a few times where my kids have walked in uh when i do some late afternoon podcasts to get home from school and all of a sudden i've got kids asking for gum to be pushed on the swing all kinds of stuff so yeah this could be a good a uh, good opportunity that I have an unlimited usage, uh, but that that's that's really the main one, guys, and that's why I joined. That's why I'm using my own money. Um, I mean, one other thing too, um, if you do have your own business and mm -hmm. you can take people out, this could be a write-off. I'm not a tax expert or anything like that, uh, but certainly, it, I, and I know a lot of other people that are in this club now that have small business or small business owners and they are using this for entertainment purposes or yes. like your buddy who's, <laughs> who's I don't know which member it is, but he's using it obviously to, to work out of it. Yeah. I'm certain he's writing off some, if not all of it. Uh, so that part is kind of cool too, uh, to be able to, to use this as a, a true membership mm -hmm. on your credit card and uh, be able to write, write off some or all of it depending on your situation.
Oh, yeah. Once again, this is not tax advice. I'm not a tax <laughs> attorney or anything like that. So do not ever say that Joe Simon's told you to do that. But I know that that is one opportunity for some of you that have small businesses and truly use it for your business to entertain people, etc. So other than that, guys, uh, I hope that helps. I hope this clears up some of the questions that I heard from quite a few of you uh, about Freedom Book Club and then ultimately why I joined with my own hard earned money and why I'm just having so much fun using these boats. They've made it just so simple for me. They made it simple for my family. And, uh, and they're just super, super helpful and they want you to use it. And that's mm-hmm. that's one thing that I, I love. Like they, they want more people out here. Like you guys kind of get nervous if no one's using the boats. Like, all right, no one, yeah. what's going on here? Right. Like you want these things being, uh, being used and more members because more members means more boats. More choices. More, more power to the club, power yeah. to the people. And selfishly, because some, some people on Instagram are like, oh, how much are they paying you? They're not paying me squat. Selfishly, I want more people in this club because I want that bass boat. <laughs> I want that I want that bass boat with a troll motor so I can get out here and do uh, more bass fishing. Uh, my boy Johnny and I, so we actually filmed a podcast out here on the, on the boat. Johnny Kelly and I did mm-hmm. the uh, Unchurched uh, podcast number two. And uh, we're like, ah, oh, man, we got an extra hour to kill. So we had, we went and did a little fishing, and it did, did well. We positioned ourselves the right way and just you know kind of drifted along lily pads. Uh, but it would have been a whole lot nicer to have you know have a troll motor. Yeah. So that's why, selfishly, I, I want some more people in here. Um, and one other thing too that you guys do, and I'm guessing other groups do this, is some group events. Uh, was it yeah. once a month? Or? We do we do group events once once a month. Uh, like it's, just it's, like a get together, right? Yeah, the it's club. a get together. Yeah. It's like a little dock party. We'll do some dock parties. Um, uh, have some drinks, a little bit of food, uh, and yeah, we'll just we'll just so we can get everybody to know each other. Uh, I mean, this is this is um, this is a big thing with the boat club. I mean, there there could be potential of new friends, new new uh, bonds that you guys could make. Yeah, it's uh, networking, and yeah, stuff too. It really that too. It's I a mean, club. it's a it, club. It's it like is. a country club. It really is. And I mean, uh, I have I have two members back to Tim Hassett and Brad Scolton. Uh, they actually come out here. And they get two boats. They'll have a big pontoon, and then they'll have a ski boat because they both have fairly big families. Yep. And they will uh, get out here on one of these deck boats, and they'll pull the kids around around one of the lakes, and then we'll go drop off half of them, go pick up the other half, switch out the equipment they're using, whether it's a, a wakeboard or a tube, and then they'll go ahead and switch out the equipment and take the other kids and do what they want to do. So, I mean, it's, it's really cool. And then they can... Pull off to the side, type two boats up together, sit there, have lunch, and then go right back at it. That's awesome. So, yeah, there. It, it, the more people that you know within the club, that's why these these social events are cool to go to. Um, and we also bring out more information, like the next boat that we're going to buy. And then we also like to give the members to name the boats as well. So any good any good names, what we, what we want them to do is throw them in a bucket, and then at the end of that that uh, event, we'll go ahead and we'll we'll go ahead and pick it out. We'll read who who uh, put the name in, and then we'll go ahead and and we'll have that printed and slap it right on the back of the boat. That's awesome. Oh yeah. What would have been some of the names? I don't even know the boat names. One's uh, par- party something. Or? Yeah, we have. So our big pontoon is actually party time. Party time. Uh, and then we have uh, the other. Two pon- uh, the deck boat, our first deck boat that we had is Serenity, and then uh, oh, I'm sorry, Simplicity. And oh, then the Serenity's other- good. That's yeah. the old Seinfeld. Serenity well, now. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, the other one's Serenity. The uh, smaller pontoon is Serenity. So we're actually still looking for two names for these these two new boats that we have. Nice. So as soon as we get some good names, then we'll we'll uh, we'll get them on and slap them right on the back of the boat. Serenity now. <laughs> oh, I love that episode. Cool. Well, guys, hope that helps. Um, if you are in Polk County, I, once again, selfishly would encourage you to come down just to meet them. That's how I joined because I was skeptical. I Once again, I, I, I Googled stuff and I, I had it in my mind it was going to cost this much. And so I just, I went up there one day, like unannounced. Mm-hmm. I think it was a Sunday. And uh, Alex was down there on the dock and just ended up chatting with him. Super nice. And I was like, yeah, well, I'll come back and, uh, and you know, and get like the full tour. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I did and, and signed up right right away that, uh, that next week. So I'll encourage you to come down. Uh, maybe it might be better if they call in advance or try to book an appointment. Yeah. I mean, at me like, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> either way, uh, I don't mind walk-ups. Uh, I'm, I'm here a lot. So uh, there will always someone be someone here. So uh, walk-ups are fine, too, as well. Uh, I mean, of course calling in advance would make it a lot easier but hey um you have the time you have so whatever time you got 
yep. if you want to check it out if it's really interesting you come on and you get to hang out with myself and my crazy family because we're here using it quite often so join the club selfishly for me i want this bass boat <laughs> soon <laughs> but guys hope that helps hope that clears up a few things and if you are a freedom boat club owner i hope that helps give some some kind of tips for you guys in terms of just having a clear message on your site I, I have to imagine you might have lost a few members who are maybe just confused like i was because they read the first thing on google um, that was slightly incorrect and that might be the case there might be some clubs that are five thousand and have lower monthlies but from what i found the most of them are not that high yeah. uh, and very few of them are and and most of them are a whole lot easier to swallow and you will save money what, what what's there's something on the site about how much money you'll save on average oh do you remember that? I do not. Uh, it was some cool stat that you save 48% yeah. Yeah. Uh, compared to owning a boat mm -hmm. and having just the freedom of going as much as you want mm -hmm. uh, without worrying about maintenance and all the other stuff. So anyhow, I'll find that quote on your on your web. I think it was on the main Freedom Book Club website. But okay. Anyhow, guys, hope that helps. Alex, thanks for your time. Yeah, we'll, thanks for having uh, me. Take this, uh, take this boat back in and let you get back to the real work. Yes, sir. All right, guys. If you haven't already... Please, 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 please give us a review on, especially on iTunes. But regardless of where you are, iTunes is where the majority of the traffic seems to come from. And it helps us big time to show up in the search for iTunes, which gives us more amazing guests and more opportunities to continue to grow this podcast. So all I ask is that you obviously subscribe if you haven't and then give us a review. Let us know how we're doing and let me know other topics or experts or stories that you want us to talk about on the podcast. So, guys, thank you so much. Much love from the whole team at Salt Strong. We be out. Cause this year, it's in my soul. It was